Good morning, Commissioner Snolte, uh, Ridgeway, and Owen. It's a privilege to be here this morning, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to uh, present a, an idea that, that I'm working on now in preparation for the next session. Um, and before I get into that, I just want to say uh, I represent the 14th District in the House of Representatives, which includes parts of Southwest Clay and Southeast Pike Counties. And it's been a, a, during the interim, I've had an opportunity to get around and, and meet not only with uh, constituents door to door and community events, but I've also been going to uh, a number of government meetings, such as city councils, and, and uh, so have a chance, opportunity to come to, to your commission meeting this morning and want to extend uh, to you, as I have individually before, but just the, the opportunity to work together and uh, always know that if you have questions at the state level or you need a resource there or, or you have um, issues that you're dealing with as a county, we need to work collaboratively together for the, for the people of Pike County and uh, want to keep those lines of communication open. Uh, what I wanted to just briefly introduce you today, um, uh, it, it just it basically as an introduction, is is an idea that I'm working on for the uh, to have a property assessment limit for the elderly and disabled. This is this is an idea that has been that the legislature has looked at in, in past years. But uh, basically, what it is is uh, that the bill would limit the increase in assessed valuation of residential property to the percentage of increase in the federal social security benefits in the previous year for a person who's over 65 or who is, who is disabled. And I know um, uh, Commissioner Nolte and, and Commissioner uh, Ridgeway, you had, when, when you were working in the State House also dealt with proposals along these lines. Um, it, this has come out, I, as I've, in the last couple of years, this has been an idea that I've looked at, looked at past legislation and think it would be good for the, for the seniors in, in my district, and in particular this year, um, I've heard from, from a number of, just, just three, three people in the last two weeks of seniors who have uh, written to me or called me about issues that they're facing because they're on fixed incomes. And in particular this year, the Social Security increase did not go up. And, uh, and yet, they're still faced, so they're, they're, they have a limited income, a fixed income. They're still faced with that, and yet they get, in, they get hit with increases in, from multitude of sources, whether it be uh, property tax um, or, um, or long-term health care, long-term health care insurance premiums going up. Um, whatever it be, uh, some, some are facing restructuring and pensions plans due to companies going out of business, things of that sort. So there are a lot of areas, um, and there are a multitude of reasons that might hurt senior citizens. Uh, but one area that, that, we, that we as a state and we as a county, I think, can uh, impact and, and have some, some, some good opportunity to help them is in the area of property taxes. Now we as, as uh, public officials are excited when we have increases in assessed valuation. That's good. It means the economy is going well. Uh, that's good for the county revenue. It's good for schools. It's, that, it's good for a lot of people, but unfortunately not everybody celebrates in that when we have property assessed valuations. And those are, are some of the most vulnerable in our society. Um, those who are senior or are disabled. And, and I think it's important that we take a look at that. Um, and so th this um, legislation that I'm now working with our bill drafters on would do that. It would set basically a cap at the assessed valuation so that in any given year, uh, that assessed valuation could not go higher than the percentage of, of a social increase that they may receive. Um, and the other aspect that is, is a bit different that, than has been floated before, which is why I want to bring it to you this morning, is, is I want to make, uh, one of the things I've heard from, from counties is is uh, and it's an important aspect, and that's that's local control, and that that means that we don't we as a state don't put unfunded mandates upon uh, our counties. And so one of the one piece in this that that would be different than what has been floated in the past is that this will essentially have an opt-in uh, option for for lack of a better word, but for counties, in which uh, it would in, we would put the framework at the state to be able to do this. Um, but it would be subject to the approval of the county commission or the, the county uh, governing boards um, to be able to, to, to let you and other county uh, officials around the state take a look at their situation 
and uh, make sure it's right for them. And if they want to be able to do that and give their seniors a break, uh, that they can they can do so too. So the idea is that we don't want to tax seniors out of out of their homes. There might be a multitude of reasons why a senior citizen may choose to to, to leave his or her person uh, personal place of residence. But let's not uh, let's not have taxes be the reason that they have to leave their home. Um, so that's the idea I'm working on, planning to propose that bill when, when filing begins. And uh, we'll have greater details once we get into the weeds of it and, and the, the specifics. But I wanted to bring that to you and just get, give that to you as an idea and see if you had any thoughts or, or, or questions along those lines. Thank you very much. I appreciate you bringing forward this idea. Um, one of the reasons I think that it's important is that the uh, sunsetting of the Homestead Preservation Act, which did provide some property tax relief to seniors, uh, I think that makes uh, your initiative all the more important. And uh, the idea that this is enabling legislation as opposed to a mandate is certainly something that uh, I think uh, really, uh, really makes it a, a positive thing when you have the local option and you have local control. I think that it's, uh, it, it's a great improvement over uh, previous uh, versions of this. Uh, something that you had mentioned was the Social Security uh, benefits is scheduled uh, to have no increase uh, this year. One of the things that certainly uh, comes to mind, this is hardly the first year that that's been the case, is that somehow or other the government thinks that people, especially those more vulnerable, uh, can live on a zero percent increase. Uh, it's been by thought that perhaps the government thinks that uh, people can live on a zero percent increase, perhaps the government should live on a zero increase for a while and see how that works out. Right. So I very much appreciate uh, the fact that you're stepping forward and, uh, and carrying this um, and on the broader, uh, in broader terms, the fact that you're here and that we're talking about proposed legislation, which cannot even be pre filed until December 1, this engagement uh, with uh, the county and the state elements, I think is a very positive thing and it's a great way for us to be able to communicate uh, both what, what the county government uh, is, thoughts are and uh, more importantly, uh, what our constituents are telling us, so that gives you an additional avenue of, of input from the citizens that we both represent. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, congratulations on getting proactive on something like this. Um, and I, there, there are some, there were some hearings that were conducted all around the state a number of years ago. I remember one was conducted down, I want to say, Payoff. Baptist Church, and if there's any documentation still floating around the Capitol having to do with those meetings, you probably find those helpful because it was flooded with seniors who were literally just in tears because they couldn't afford to pay the taxes on the house that they long ago paid for. Right. Um, and I will, I will try to help see if I can find any more about that. But the other question I have is. Will you be meeting with any of the, um, our Northland delegation to discuss this in the future? Because I'd like to show up and hear what you all have to say and just discuss it a little bit more. Yes, yeah, nothing, I don't have a, a scheduled time now, but uh, yes, I do want to work with the, with the other delegates and, um, and with other community groups too as well. So um, I, I will keep you informed on that and, and let you know. I'm curious because I know questions will pop out just through, through the discussion mm -hmm. um, about how that it may impact different areas um, and how it impacts new construction and different things of that nature. So um, I, I'm looking forward to, to hearing more about your plans, but I do congratulate you about coming here and talking about this um, because it, it, really, it really helps to keep us on top of what, what's going on. I appreciate it. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Evan. Uh, I'm going to applaud you for your, your efforts. I don't know if you know what the chances that they get through, you know, because a lot of bills get filed down there, but they get, get, get too far. But, you know, I want to go back to the, the zero inflation deal itself. So, uh, most of us out there are buying stuff every day, you know. I see inflation. <laughs> There's a lot of inflation out there. And uh, they're going to come up that zero. I don't know how they do that. I appreciate your, I think it's a really good idea. Thank you. Thank you. One of the things I just follow up on Owen's comments that, and this is obviously not something within our power to affect, to affect um, and that is, it seems to me that 
one of the shortcomings of the way this is calculated uh, is that uh, seniors have a lot higher percentage of their income to go to prescription medication and to medical needs. Uh, that is something I think that perhaps should be given, given more weight so that uh, their increases are a little bit more practical to their, uh, you know, to their situation. Right, exactly. But, but thank you again, and uh, we look forward. I realize that we are looking at something that is very much in its early stages here. Uh, and that there is no real, uh, real you know, legislation that has been cast into form yet. That's going to take some time. So certainly we don't want to be premature in making comment on something that is still uh, relatively uh, new. But uh, certainly as we go along this trail, if, uh, you know, if there's input that we can get from any of us, we certainly uh, appreciate the opportunity. And uh, should this, uh, once this, once you have a, uh, a working piece of legislation, we'd certainly be interested considering whether or not we would want to uh, endorse that particular piece of legislation. That's an area we want to be a little bit more active and, and proactive in is to engage with legislation that is going to be affecting the county and our citizens. Great. Thank you again. I appreciate it. Thank you.